There is nowhere else that you're going to get ready to go for week zero of college football in the time we're going to get you ready. I have the college football expert with me, Matt Josephs, and this is Gold Sheet TV. I'm your host, Dan Alexander, and I say, Matt, we get right into it because nobody wants to hear the platitudes. They want to hear what we have to say about this Navy and Notre Dame game going in Dublin. The line continues to tick up for the Fighting Irish. 21 and a half point favorites now on the Wager Talk Live odd screen. Total moving down with this weather forecast as well. 49 is what we're looking at. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, and it's an interesting game for a lot of respects in terms of when you look at Navy, the easiest game, quote unquote, to play Navy is the first game of the season uh, because you can, you know, practice the triple option as much as you want to uh, going into the offseason. We've seen that Navy has scored one touchdown against an FBS opponent, it feels like the last five or six years in that first game. And you look at last year, you know, Delaware took care of them and, and, and did some business against them. Actually, it's the first touchdown in the first quarter. Uh, because, you know, it's a tough way to start the game. And, and something I've kind of talked about here uh, on this show and a bunch of different shows, first quarter unders involving the academies and especially the academy teams that have a good defense. I like Navy's defense this year. They put up some tremendous numbers last year. I think they put up tremendous numbers once again in an ideal first quarter involving the academy. Uh, they take up about eight minutes uh, of a drive. Uh, they kick a field goal, and then the other team maybe scores, and then, you know, we kind of run the quarter out and only have like three or four drives here. The number is 10, and the one thing I think was interesting on DraftKings, uh, the 10 was at uh, even money to the under. Now the under for the first quarter is minus 115. I hope I didn't tell too many people to do this, and now everybody's kind of jumping on it. But the only thing I'm looking at here potentially, first quarter under once again, they're playing this game overseas. There's just so many factors here that give tell me that there will be a slow start. Even if you like the over, I think there's going to be a slow start in the first quarter. Yeah, and uh, to Matt's point, it's why it pays to like and subscribe here to Wager Talk TV. See, I have an inside track. I produce Wager Talk today, so I already got my bet in on the under in the first quarter because I was listening to Matt Josephs live on Wager Talk today, and we suggest you do the same by hitting that subscribe button. All right, let's keep on moving. Rotation order, UMass, New Mexico State. This one Decent line move, Matt. So I want to get your thoughts. Is it opened at nine and a half for New Mexico State? It's down to six and a half. Total painted pretty much at 45. Uh, thoughts on that move and how are you seeing this game? Yeah, you know, it's always interesting to see these line moves. And I think they're interesting in week zero because these are the games yep. you've had for so long. I mean, these these lines have been out probably for like three or four weeks now. It feels like even more than that uh, for some of these games. So obviously people have had plenty of time to kind of digest things. Uh, this is a game I'm going to pass on completely. Um, the one intriguing thing, and I think the reason why money's coming in on UMass, is UMass has an intriguing quarterback, the Georgia Tech transfer, who played a bit at Clemson as well. And I'm not going to even try and pronounce his name, but, I mean, he's a guy that's kind of, you know, brought something to this team, a little excitement here. And, look, you're not going to take a squad that's won one game each of the last couple of years. It feels like they, they've got, like, three or four wins the last four years. Um, but he is something that's intriguing. And I, I think that UMass could show up. I don't trust their defense, even though a lot of their defense is back. Mm -hmm. New Mexico State is a team that has a little bit of a winning pedigree in that, before people go nuts. They played really well last year, and I think what, what they're kind of doing there is, is building a decent program. I like Diego Pavia here, but this is a game that I'm going to skip here uh, because I don't like the line move. Um, the one thing I'll say is this, and this is always controversial, and this is something that I would do. If you do like New Mexico State... Maybe do it in a six-point teaser. I understand people are screaming. They're like, wait, you don't do teasers in college football. I think this might be a situation, especially since it's six and a half. Maybe you don't feel comfortable with New Mexico State covering the number. You do think they're going to win. Perfect thing to take it down to a half or even money and throw it in a teaser with maybe something else that we discuss later on in the show. Hop below in the comments, a college football teaser potential from our man Matt Josephs. Agree with that? I love myself some teasers, and people always ream me out. They say, well, that's not a Wong teaser. That's not an advantage teaser. Hey, if I get to the window and cash, that's all I care about, Matt. So I love the breakdown there on the UMass New Mexico State. Biggest favorite that we've talked about thus far is in the next game. And I say this thus far because just wait. We got some lumber to lay coming up here. But FIU, La Tech, La Tech, the 11-point favorite 58 and a half the total on the wager talk live odds screen. What do we think here, Matt? 
I will say this. Uh, as something in this game I will be involved with. I have not decided yet. There's a couple of different angles that I'm looking at here. But this is a game that I kind of circled and said I'm going to get involved in some respect. So this is somewhat of a teaser that I would, if you were interested to see what I'm going to play, go check out my package on uh, sportsmemo.com. The play will be up once I decide later on tonight. But this is just a really mm -hmm. intriguing game. You don't get conference US, You don't get conference games usually very early in the season, and it's week zero. And this is a, a large Conference USA game because I think Louisiana Tech's a sleeper in this conference. Hank Bachmeyer, the Boise State transfer, uh, comes over and plays quarterback. They've got the the coldest Crawford uh, from New, New Nebraska coming over. They do have some injuries, though. The backfield could be a little bit shaky. Uh, their starting running back is out. Their backup running back, the transfer from Miami, Ohio, is questionable for the game, so there may not be a lot of running. But I think Louisiana Tech, with that air raid style of offense that Sonny Cumbie has, is going to be pretty good, uh, at least early on. Smoke Harris is back. Uh, he's another guy that's kind of interesting uh, for this group. Uh, and then on the other side, you've got an FAU team that just announced that Grayson James was going to be their starting quarterback. Uh, I think he's a pretty solid one. Had his ups and downs last year for the Panthers. But I think that there's some offense to be available here. Louisiana Tech had one of the worst run defenses in the country last year. And... Only four stars are back from that group, so I don't know if that's good or bad that so, from such a bad group, uh, so few starters are back. So I'm definitely going to be involved in this game somehow, just haven't decided yet which way I'm going. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned the coldest to ever do it because that should basically be your new name, Matt, when we're talking about college football. Last year, 125, 86, and 4. Oh, that's only one year. Okay, well, 2021, 130, 98, and three well that's only two years how about 2020 when nobody knew what was going on matt goes 98 59 and three so year over year riding with matt joseph's in college football and riding with the gold sheet it's a good profitable endeavor all right i talked about how we had some lumber to lay man uh caleb brewer is the talk of the heisman favorites and he is laying 31 points when San Jose State comes to town in week zero action. High total to 66 and a half. And according to that line, they think USC is going to be scoring just about all of those points. So what do you think here, Matt, in this? Uh, quite the line. Yes, I mean, it's it's a large one. And um, I mean, I think it's for good reason. Um, but here's the thing. Yeah. If you're going to get involved with USC in this game, I think you got to make a first half play. If your book has three quarters plays, whatever, I, I would be very worried about having the USC backups to a defense that's already not the greatest defense ever basically deciding this bet for you. If you like USC, either play the first half or play the team total first half because I think they're going to come out on fire here. San Jose State had a good defense last year, but they pretty much lost everybody on their defensive line. That was why they had such a good defense was because they got pressure on pretty much everybody. Caleb Williams trying to win the Heisman Trophy for the second straight time is going to want to put on a show here. Um, and as I said, I think that this, the USC defense is going to give up some points here. Siobhan Cordero, pretty solid uh, quarterback. Uh, we are trying to figure out the, the, the status of their number one wide receiver. He was not seen at practice mm -hmm. the last time media was there. That would be relatively important. Uh, the Robinson Kinnett running back, he's very good as well. I think San Jose State can score some points here. Uh, obviously, the over has ticked up a bit from its open at 63. Somebody must have really hammered it because there's a lot of 66s, 66 and a halfs. There's a chance, and I don't think I'm going to get to the window on this, but there's a chance I would potentially look for San Jose State plus the points only because the back door is going to be wide open in that fourth quarter if USC's backups are in there. It's one of those plays I'm probably not going to play, but it's something I'm kind of putting mm -hmm. out there because USC definitely is going to have their backups, I would say, most likely in that fourth quarter, and you don't want that deciding your bet. That back door swinging in the wind. And you know that college football is back when you start seeing 31 point spreads. Best time of the year here, baby. Absolutely love it. Uh, we talked about the line move in that UMass and New Mexico State game. This one is also intriguing to me. Back to back games that we'll be talking about that had pretty decent line moves. So let's take a look at Ohio taking on San Diego State. This one opened with uh, SDSU at four and a half point favorites. They're down to two pretty much across the board total in this one, 49. So uh, thoughts on that move. And I'm looking forward to getting your thoughts in UTEP, Jacksonville State coming up next as well but on this one Matt what are we thinking 
Well, I mean, I think the the news that came out that Curtis Rourke is going to start for uh, Ohio is was a huge thing here. I think a lot of people were kind of waiting to hear because he had that injury last year. And, you know, he's coming back a little bit early. So I don't know necessarily how healthy he's going to be. I mean, obviously, he's healthy enough that they're going to start him. Um, but when you put him and the running back that they have and the number one wide receiver they have, it's one of the best trios in the MAC, up right up there with Toledo, who's going to have pretty much everybody back too. Uh, it is a long trip, but obviously week zero, that first week of the season, you're not as worried about long trips because you can go out there as early as you want to. I, I have not read uh, when Ohio got out to California or even if they're out there yet uh, to get ready for this game, but um, there's some things involving Ohio's offense that I think people like. You usually hear San Diego State, you're like, San Diego State defense. Well, a lot of their defensive line is gone. Patrick McMorris went to um, California, uh, so their defense should still be pretty good, but not as good as it has been in the past, and of course, uh, their offense has been really shaky as usual. Uh, Jalen Maiden makes the transfer over from safety to quarterback last year. Crazy uh, position change. He was all right. He had some moments um, and he comes back. I was reading an article about San Diego State, how they're still kind of looking for wide receivers to fill out their depth chart that they were pulling guys. One guy came off of the freshman team and then another guy was a late transfer here. That's a little bit of a concern. Ohio's defense really bad early on last year. Then they kind of found their stride in Mac play. Uh, this is a really interesting contest here, and I think the announcement that Rourke is back as quarterback is the reason why we've seen all this Ohio money come in. Great breakdown there. Check him out on Twitter as well, at Mid-Major Matt. Uh, I teased this one a little bit, Matt, and this one's one where we saw the line absolutely flip. Uh, Jacksonville State opened as one-and-a-half-point favorites. You're now seeing the UTEP Miners as one-point favorites on the Wager Talk live odd screen. Total in this one also had a sizable move. 52-and-a-half uh, was where it opened, and we're looking at 54. So points expected, and the Miners expected to show out. At least that's what the market says. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, and the one thing also to kind of look at for this week is the weather. A lot of places it's mm -hmm. going to be really hot. Ruston, uh, Louisiana, for that Louisiana Tech game, they will be approaching 90 degrees. It's actually going to be 100, it feels like, a lot of the day. And then it's going to get down to 90 by kickoff at, at, at 9 o'clock or so, maybe a little bit lower than that. So just look at the weather. Make sure always want to do that sort of thing. Check out your favorite weather site to get a kind of an idea. You don't want to go overboard if it's rain or anything like that, but uh, certainly something to look at here. And Jacksonville State starting out their time as an FBS opponent, um, they get UTEP here. Another conference game in Conference USA. Now, Jacksonville State can't win the conference championship. They can't make a bowl game, but they could still do some things and kind of mess up everybody else's world. I really like this Jacksonville State team. One of the, the uh, win totals that I played, especially because it was plus money, so it was just a sprinkle, was, over, uh, was the over for Jacksonville State, Rich Rodriguez. Obviously, Rich Rodriguez knows what FBS football is about. He's been all over the place, it feels like, in the FBS. Um, they've got Zion Webb, who, is the, who has been in college football for seven years, just got a waiver uh, approved by the NCAA. Uh, they have a really solid run game, although if you do DFS, Anwar Lewis was not listed on the depth chart for Jacksonville State, so maybe you look somewhere else. Uh, look at the Louisiana Monroe transfer or somebody else like that. Um, and then they've got a decent defense. Their defensive line's really good, but is it ready to make the jump to FBS? Last year, they gave up over 50 points to Tulsa. That's a bit of a concern. And then you got a UTEP team on the other side, Gavin Hardison, Deion Hankins, really good quarterback or running back a duo there for the Miners here. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. We should see a really good atmosphere here for Jacksonville State. I, I kind of like them. I kind of factored in a win here for them in terms of that win total uh, over that I played with regards to Jacksonville State, but it's a very interesting game. You may see this line flip back and forth, so if you don't like where it is now, maybe wait a little bit and see. You either get potentially more points towards UTEP, and then you're maybe like a two, two and a half point underdog for Jacksonville State, or if you like UTEP, maybe there's a chance sharp money comes in on Jacksonville State, and you can get UTEP as an underdog, but this is a fascinating game for the Gamecocks in their very first contest as an FBS team. Yeah, and maybe we found our potential other teaser leg. Since we don't want to go advantage teaser, hey, maybe you take Jacksonville State up with the points. I won't make Matt co-sign that.
And it won't be an official one for me, but hop below in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong on that one. All right, Matt, it's apropos that the last game we'll be talking about is so often the get-back game. It's when you see Hawaii on the schedule, and they're taking on Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt painted across the Wager Talk live on screen at 17.5 point favorites. Total has some disparity, though. We got 55 and a half. It's as high at some spots as 56 and a half. How are you looking to bet this one, Matt? So I think a lot of the betting, at least early on, because I don't necessarily know how many of the Sharps, or maybe the Sharps hit this thing the moment it came out, and then I think they're kind of waiting until maybe Friday or Saturday to get back in as well. But I think some of the betting in this game is kind of influenced by last year. Basically, Vanderbilt went mm. down to the islands and crushed them. And I think it coming off of the really awful offseason that Hawaii had last year, they had a ton of transfers, they had the Todd Graham stuff to deal with, there was just a lot of you know, bad things surrounding the Hawaii program. So you can understand that Vanderbilt hung, what was it, like a 63 spot on him last year, whatever it was. They they basically crushed him last year. And I think some people are looking at that. Now, once again, look, when we talk about Hawaii, you're looking at Hawaii sometimes at home, and then you're always concerned, well, they're not so good away from the islands. But once again, they can leave whenever they want to to get ready for this Vanderbilt game. So it shouldn't be as much of an issue. I expect Hawaii to be a little bit better this year than they were last year. Of course, that's not saying very much. Don't think they're going to go to Vanderbilt and win this game. But I would not be surprised if this was close. I would not be surprised if this was a little bit lower scoring. Vanderbilt's Vanderbilt. They've got some decent weapons on offense. They've got a mediocre to poor defense that gets exposed in the SEC. This is obviously not an SEC game. I was very shocked to see. I think it was 37, 37 and a half was the Vanderbilt team total here. It's really aggressive. I know that Hawaii's defense isn't great, but it's Vanderbilt's offense. And I just don't know necessarily if they're going to hit that number. They could, but maybe that means you also look at the under here. I don't know. It's it's two teams that I'm probably not going to be on very often. But for those concerned about Hawaii being away from the islands, they've had plenty of time to, uh, to kind of get there and, and handle themselves. So that wouldn't be as much of an issue for me in this one. Yeah, I love it. And uh, and as you mentioned, sure, uh, you can look at what happened last year, but it's a year-over-year -year change. I would also maybe pump the brakes if you're thinking, oh, what a revenge spot for Hawaii. Uh, I, <laughs> there's a reason why you're still seeing uh, Vandy as that 17.5-point favorite. Well, there you go. How about week zero broken down in just over 15 minutes? You appreciate what Matt Josephs does. Obviously, check him out over at sportsmemo.com, but also – Throw us a like here on Gold Sheet TV. And uh, we promised Matt, though we're not big hot take guys, we promised our man James, who does a terrific job behind the scenes with the Gold Sheet, that we would give some hot takes. So this one will be close to his heart. Uh, I'm going to make a case for Penn State to be in the college football playoffs. And I know folks who watch all the time are already groaning. They're like, dear God, another homer pick there from Mr. Newbie. But uh, I, I honestly think it's going to come down to two spots for him. And then one of them, obviously, is when they're taking on Michigan. And historically, it hasn't been a good matchup for James Franklin. However, they finally are going to get that game at home. They finally are going to get that game without Sean Clifford throwing a back-breaking interception late in the game. And I also think this team, as long as they lean on that run game, they're going to put up a lot of points, highlighted by what Nick Singleton's able to do in the backfield. I think they had a nice recruiting class, a solid offensive line, and that's really been an Achilles heel for them is what they have up front. So if they can beat Michigan, if they can get that elusive road win in Ohio State, I think you'd be looking at the year when they finally get to go to the college football playoffs and then probably get crushed in the first round. But uh, hot take out of the gate, the Nittany Lions making it to the CFB playoffs. Matt, why am I so wrong on this? Well, I mean, I, I'm part of my analysis is that I don't like Penn State, and I just, uh, as a Philly guy, it's I know fair. I'm supposed to, but, I mean, I was raised to dislike Penn State, so therefore I don't like uh, the Nittany Lions. But, I mean, look, as you just said, the schedule lines up very well for them. I mean, you know, outside of those two games, they're going to be heavy favorites, it feels like, in a lot of these things. The the road trip to Maryland could be a little tricky because, you know, Tua's yeah. brother is, is a pretty solid player, and then you've got the road trip to Michigan State. Now, granted, it's the last game of the year. 
Uh, and also, if I remember correctly, that game is not at Michigan State. It's being played, I believe, in the Lions Stadium, if I remember correctly. Yep. Um, their non-conference slate is not very tough. They get UMass, they get Delaware, they get Penn, uh, West Virginia all at home. Um, so I think the schedule lines up for them, but they have to win both of those games, most likely against Ohio State and Michigan. And I don't know if they're necessarily going to do it. The other thing is, I'm not a big uh, Franklin guy. I just think that Franklin's a very good recruiter. He sells his school yep. really well. I just think at times his in-game adjustments aren't great. Manny Diaz, last year at times, his defense struggled a little bit. He wasn't necessarily the best play caller as a defensive coordinator. So the talent is there. Love the quarterback. Love the home field advantage as much as I can't stand all those people. But um, <laughs> and, and I think they're very nice people. I just don't like Penn State fans because I don't like Penn State. Let me just qualify that before I get the hate comments and <laughs> <laughs> in the in the chat um i think you it's not a bad thing uh, i think there's certainly some value there if you want to put a sprinkle on penn state to make the playoff they're not winning it obviously but they've got to win those two games and take care of business at maryland and at michigan state which could be two tricky spots as well yeah two things that don't mix is matt joseph's and happy valley that that makes sense to me matt that uh, that definitely adds up all right, this goes back and harkens back to something that you and I talked about when we were doing college football previews uh, for Gold Sheet TV here, and it's just how a lot of people think that the ACC is already wrapped up, and it's a two-horse race between Clemson and Florida State, and you've been ringing the bell heavy that – I don't think it's that simple. So uh, Clemson, Florida State to not even make the ACC title game, that's a pretty hot take, Matt. What are you thinking? So here's the thing. I, they're obviously the best two teams in the conference, and they're the, and the, I think the gap is is a little big. But I think that three, four, five, and maybe even six have an opportunity. We already talked about on the show, what, what, like two or three episodes ago of the college version. I put a sprinkle on Pittsburgh to make the uh, the championship game. I, I think Pittsburgh's schedule lines up really well. They don't play Clemson. Uh, they don't play Miami. They get Florida State at home. Their road games in conference aren't the, aren't the toughest uh, of the bunch. I think of the two of them, it's probably Florida State who's a little bit more vulnerable. Obviously, Florida State has to go play at Clemson. We assume they'll probably lose that game. Um, they obviously also, as you just heard, play at Pittsburgh. So I think that is is a losable game. You know, both teams have their question marks. You've got Kate Klubnick in there, and that's who Clemson wanted to start at quarterback. Is he going to be good? I do like the fact they finally have an offensive coordinator there in Garrett Riley. Um, but is their defense going to continue to be great? The depth behind the starters at Clemson's defense is a bit of a Concern. And then Florida State, you know, are they back back? Is it Florida State of the past? I know they had a really good year last year, but let's say they lose that game to LSU week one. Does doubt start creeping in? Do people start questioning Mike Norvell? Does the schedule catch up to them a little bit? Um, so look, most likely those two are going to make the championship game. But I give Pitt a chance, obviously, because I put a sprinkle on them to make it. Um, I think if Miami ever lives up to the hype, this is a, an opportunity there. I think that if you also look at North Carolina, who is the best quarterback in the conference in Drake May, NC State always has the pieces to potentially be a threat. I think there's a lot of other teams. It's more so believing in the teams behind them than not yep. believing as much in the top two teams. Yeah, I, I, I'm i with you, man. And, and any time that it's preseason chalk, I always try and find a way to find value elsewhere. So I, I'm, I'm, I like the breakdown, how you mention, you know, hey, it's not being so bearish on these teams. It's being a little bit more bullish than maybe uh, pundits and the market thinks about the teams behind those two in the ACC. So as always, absolute gold dropped by our man, Matt Josephs, right here on Gold Sheet. TV. Head on over to goldsheet.com or wt.buzz slash gs. Early bird football pricing is still in effect, so you can get the most jam-packed edition of the Gold Sheet ever for this upcoming season right there at a terrific price. Big thanks to Matt Josephs. I mean, less than 25 minutes and we got you this much college football info. I don't know who else is doing it, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with more college football right around the corner, guess what? The college football show on Wager Talk TV is back, and it's just a click away right here on Wager Talk TV.